Danny Eames is surplus to requirements at West Ham. Feel a bit bad saying it, actually. He's a good guy, Danny. Uh, good footballer, fine footballer, actually. Excellent finisher. It's just he doesn't really match up with what David Moyes wants to do. And it's not for David Moyes to change his style of football, which is successful, uh, to accommodate Danny Ings. I can't see any set of circumstances where, on a regular basis, West Ham play with two men up front. And that's why Danny Ings is going to continue uh, to struggle at West Ham. Now, there were suggestions in the summer transfer window that Danny Ings had been offered the chance to move uh, and he turned it down. If that's the case, and I don't know, I couldn't say with any sort of level of certainty, but if that is the case, I'm sure he'll revisit that in the January transfer window because surely Danny Ings is getting far less minutes than even he thought. He's a bit part player. It's just not me just saying Danny Ings is surplus to requirements. I had a little look at the stats and it's sort of, it's borne out by what I thought. Danny Ings started against Bakatopola in the group stage game in the Europa League. He started the game... He was poor. Uh, he just was. He was very, very poor. He got substituted. David Moyes brought on the artillery, went on. West Ham won the game. Uh, Danny Ings came on as an 87th minute substitute against Liverpool. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a token gesture really at that point, isn't it? Maybe against his, his former club, so to speak. He started against Lincoln City. Again, um, did not pull up any trees at all. I mean, the thing is, when you play, if you're a player as good as Danny Ings is, when you get those opportunities to play against clubs like Bakatopola or Lincoln City, you sort of need to be close to being the best player on the pitch. And he's just not. I've made the excuses why he doesn't at the start of the video. I'm not going to carry on doing it. It doesn't suit David Moyes' style of football. But he didn't, he didn't do that. Again, the artillery was brought on and, you know, West Ham won the game. Um, Sheffield United, he wasn't used at all. Uh, which is which has got to be a bit of a, a kick in the teeth, really, I think, for someone uh, like Danny Ings, really, hasn't it? Against Freiburg. Freiburg was a really interesting one, actually, because it's a European team. It, obviously, it's an important, important game for West Ham. Um, but Danny Ings was brought on alongside Divine Mubama for, it was in the 91st minute or something like that. So uh, it, ain't, it ain't going too well for him. And then obviously, you know, not featuring at all against Newcastle. Basically, Danny Ings, I can't see many games where he's going to play or he's going to start. And nor should he. And for that reason, I think he's probably going to be offered a transfer once again in January. And I think he should probably take it. I don't know... If any of the, it's not my business to know if any of the, the clubs that are struggling down the bottom of the Premier League are going to want to sort of hire Danny Ings to try and get them some goals. And I, and I guess in the right, that was my chair squeaking, by the way. Um, I, honest, I don't want to protest too much, but it was my chair. Um, I don't know if they're going to be prepared to pay his wages, you know, be it Burnley or be it Sheffield United or anything else. But if they play with an attacking style of football, I'm sure he'll get some goals from it. Ain't going to work at West Ham. Now, this has coincided... For a couple of things, I don't want to go into the realms of discussing any of the strikers we've been linked with over the past, what's well, the international break, been loads of transfer speculation over the international break, because actually we can look in-house and I think find better options than Danny Ings. And something's happened with Callum Marshall, which I think could really sort of play into the situation. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Callum Marshall made his senior international debut for Northern Ireland. Uh, it was a 3-0 win against San Marino, and he came on as a substitute. I had a good chance to score, actually. So, you know, found himself in a really, really good position. And, you know, look, it didn't happen, but they won 3-0, and a lot was made of it. Certainly, if you go and look at a lot of the stories uh, out of the Irish press as well, they're, they're excited about this lad coming through, and so they should be, because he looks... He looks magnificent. He reminds me a little bit, actually, in terms of his finishing, where he shoots early. He reminds me a little bit of Robbie Fowler, actually, but he's um, he's better out wide as well. He can also play out wide, which sort of makes him a little bit more suited than than, da than Danny Ings to play for West Ham. Now, we'll get to Obama in a second. I've not completely forgotten about him. Uh, far from it. But I look at the situation now. Clearly, David Moyes has no faith that Danny Ings is going to rescue a game of football for him. The only reason he's putting Danny Ings onto the pitch, I think, is possibly just to give someone five minutes rest. I say five minutes, it's two or three minutes here or there. It's not actually to impact a game. Well, in the long term, there's no benefit 
to Danny Ings for those two or three minutes, it's got to be quite insulting, you would imagine, for a player that's, you know, played at the level he has. So it probably means nothing to him more than an insult. And I'm guessing, I don't know, I don't know him, I'm not inside his head. But those two or three minutes would mean an awful lot to either Callum Marshall or Devine Mubama. Now, I think with that in mind, it's got to be something we've got to look towards doing because Callum Marshall's very, very get, getting quickly towards the point where he's too good. He's too good for the youth football he's playing in. Football's got to be competitive, right? It's got to be a challenge. If you look at Marshall play, it's not competitive for him anymore. He is a level above. I'm, just, I'm, I'm only talking about him because of the striker situation. I do think there are a number of highly talented players, by the way, uh, in West Ham's development squad, Premier League 2 team, whatever you want to call it. And I've, and I've mentioned him relatively frequently on this channel, but I just want to particularly sort of hone and focus in on Marshall. And the reason being is his international call-up is really going to focus... Well, it's not just the minds of a nation. It's going to focus his mind. He, he's going to want a taste of it. I think it's going to be very, very hard to, to go out and play in front of a sort of raucous crowd uh, at Windsor Park for your country and then go back and play sort of Premier League 2 football. And I do think he's better than that. So I think one of two things has got to happen with Marshall. He's either got to get into the first, into the first team, and I mean on the bench, and get those minutes, although they're not many, that Danny Ings is. I think he probably should be sharing them with Devine Mubama. At least one of those guys should be on the bench at all times. It's not just Danny Ings. I mean, you can make a case for Maxwell Cornet as well, just not getting hardly any game time at all. And it's hard to anticipate a set of circumstances where, where David Moyes uses those players. Let's look at the next few games. Aston Villa. Can you see Danny Ings playing against Aston Villa? Probably not. I know it's his former club. Again, if he does, it's going to be an 89th minute job, isn't it, really? If West Ham are chasing the game, you know what he's going to do. Whoever's not playing, so if Caduce isn't playing, he's going to be the one coming on. If it's Suchek that's not playing, he's going to be the one coming on. It's just David Moyes is not going to do that sort of stuff. We've got Olympiacos after that. OK, maybe. But I don't think Dan, I don't think Danny Ings starts against Olympiacos. I really don't. I think he's had his chance. I think if the moment you don't do it, so just, excuse me, bit of a, I don't know why a bit of acoustic foam fell down then. Um, the moment Danny Ings doesn't do well against Bacatapola, the moment he doesn't do very well against Lincoln City, I think that's it. I'm not sure he starts against Olympiacos. That would be the game that it might happen against. But then you've got Everton, you've got Arsenal, you've got Brentford, Nottingham Forest. He's not going to feature. I think I find it hard to imagine a scenario where a Maxwell Cornet fits in there either. So I do think that this has got to happen. You've got to start getting these young lads involved. If it doesn't happen, then Marshall, in particular, needs to go out on loan. And the reason I say in particular, there's a different pressure on Callum Marshall than there is on Devine Mubama now because of that international call-up. That changes the landscape. It changes your expectations. It really does. Uh, look, I, I'm not so sure. I think, uh, I mean, they're playing again uh, this week, Northern Ireland. And I, I'm not, I think it might be Slovenia that they're playing against. I'm not sure if he gets on in that game. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. If he does and he scores, then you could look at it two ways. If West Ham continue not to play him, West Ham have got a problem on their hands. But you could look at it a problem. You could switch it around and think, well, hold on, this is um, a, a massive opportunity. It's a massive opportunity for West Ham to start integrating a very, very talented player into the team. If not, he needs to go out on loan and he needs to go out on loan in January at championship level. I suspect there's already a plan in place. I suspect he knows that. He's just signed a new contract. But this is a very, very important time for him and it's an important time for West Ham. We, we may just well find that we've got a really good player on our books. I suspect we have. And, and the, the counter-argument is always there. It's always lurking in the comments. Who have West Ham let go that they've gone on to regret? We, we've done this. We've done this a million times. But it's, that's not reason enough not to give somebody a chance. It is really not. And that chance could come at West Ham. It could come out on loan. I suspect he'll grab it with both hands. It would not surprise me if he were to if he went to turn to the League One side now. It would not surprise me. It'd be hard to win the Golden Boot down there because he's either have missed half the season. But it would not surprise me if he's the best player in the division. Not surprise me at all. He's good. He's really, really good. And I just think Danny Ings' time is, is drawing to a close. There's only one reason why Danny Ings would stay at West Well, it'd be two. Number one, he, he might like it and he might enjoy it. But I suspect if you if you are competitive, and I sort of always assume that anyone that's got to the top level of football is competitive in their nature, you're probably not going to be happy with a 91st minute 
substitute role, an 87th minute substitute role, sitting on the bench while you watch your teammates beat Sheffield United. You're probably not going to be too happy with that at all. And I think with that in mind, he might not be that happy at West Ham, which brings it down to money. Is he going to stay at West Ham for the money? I don't know. Look, I couldn't possibly say, you know, whether he's money driven or whether he isn't. I don't know the guy. Seems like a really good guy, though. Really does. Every time you see him uh, in the training ground footage and interviews and whatnot, he's a popular guy. I understand why the squad would like to keep him around. Uh, but just from a playing perspective, I do think Danny Ings' time is over. I think now it's time for the club to start integrating Callum Marshall. 